Howdy, Jacob here. Today we are looking at Airbnb. Again, a more well-known company. $93 billion market cap on $83 billion enterprise value. The Hotel Disruptor. It's like outside of a huge drought from COVID, they have immensely humongous growth and their gross margin has improved from 75% five years ago to 82%. And then operating margins are now positive with the most recent year looking absolutely fantastic if they can keep this up. Turn investor capital 25%, earnings per share almost $3, operating profits 20, operating margin of 23%. That is amazing for them. So we see that um, good looking income statement. God, just humongous growth in income here. There was an income tax at $2.6 in the rolling 12, so that's going to skew some rolling 12 results. Balance sheet looks great. I mean, you got $2 billion long-term debt, no short-term debt, almost, almost $10 billion in cash equivalent, very liquid products. That's great. $14 billion current assets, 10 billion total liabilities, very safe company from a balance sheet perspective. Now let's look at cash flow. What do they use cash for? And it looks like recently actually bought back shares. Otherwise reinvesting in themselves a bit. Okay. Okay. And then they haven't made an acquisition since 2019. So just like every other company, we want them to be buying back shares when it's stupendously cheap. The company doesn't have a whole lot of debt, so not worried about their debt situation. They don't need to be paying a dividend right now. They're in the growth stage. So really at this point, looking at the company, I want to see them reinvesting back into themselves with massive growth rates, with a good return, at least on the last 12 months um, of rolling, uh, return invested capital. That's humongous. We want them to be buying back shares when they're stupid cheap and then making acquisitions that make sense to them that could improve margins and such. We don't just want them to be making acquisitions for growth opportunities. We want them to be reinvesting at growth opportunities. So I feel like it's, the company has been really doing that. I mean, recently reinvesting in themselves, buying back shares, probably the two things that make the most sense for this type of company. All right. So I'm going to have to, I'm going to damper, dampen this growth a bit compared to a lot of other people. So I'm, that's just, that's just going to be facts. I, um, I'm just a conservative guy. And so I would say that for me, seeing 12% growth, I mean, Airbnb is still, still a modest company. I mean, they like, I feel like Verbo has been around for quite a bit, but Airbnb really hasn't. Um, I think there's a lot of, growth opportunities within them. I don't know if they've maximized their monetization out of the site as well. And so I think that 12% to me is a lot of growth. I mean, that's 12% a year over the next seven years. That is hefty. I'd say at the end of seven years, they're probably closer to a mature company. And do they have a moat? Maybe. Um, I think an 18p in price-free cash flow is sufficient for them i think that um i think that to me that makes sense after a seven year period they'll probably have maybe high single digits but it's also a little bit riskier uh just because it's it's a newer company with not a lot of history of very positive margins and such and um, as for margins i'll probably go a little bit lower than what we're seeing here i mean again it could be higher just because it's newer but I just I just don't have that that guarantee behind me. So maybe I'll do 25 and 35 share change. I'd assume that they'd be issuing shares for the most part. And I mean, really, their stock based compensation is the plus of it. So we're seeing a billion dollars just going towards um, shares for their their head honchos that work there. Okay. 
So I would say that we're probably going to be increasing these shares quite a bit, even if they buy back shares. It, it might not, in my perspective, outdo the stock based compensation every year for the next seven years. But honestly, we get to a price that's not too far off. So 29% drop to get a 15% return given these assumptions. I mean, this is where it gets tough, and it's, it's so much of an art when you don't have a lot of history, historical data. I mean, I could easily see this happen. I mean, 12% a year for the next seven years. I mean, they've grown 40%, you know, 30% a year over uh, the last six years. It's just, can they, can they keep that up? Can they get these margins? Will they, I think this P is fairly reasonable. Is their share change just 2%? Because that implies that they're, um, you know, buying back shares, but then um, still getting that share-based compensation in there. So, I'd say very interesting company, one I'd be interested to do more research in, and it looks like probably won't be too much longer until I do. It just needs to fall, you know, 20% or so for me to do a deeper dive on it, which seems pretty reasonable to me. So hopefully everyone enjoyed the video and has a great rest of the day. Thank you.